No problem. Take your time. All righty. So I guess we'll start off. How was the Pats game? Um, so it wasn't a Pats game, but it was Pats training camp. Uh, it was really good, though. I've I've never been personally. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend has been before, so she was like, "Oh, we should go." Um, and she's a photographer as well, so um, she was getting some photos. But it was good. It was really cool to see all the players. We saw Mac Jones out there practicing. Nice. Um, they had a lot of cool fan activities going on and stuff like that for the kids and whatnot. Oh, yeah. So it was really it was good. It was a cool experience, and it's free, so you really can't complain with that. Not at all. Not at all. I was um <clears throat> I was wondering where you were based at and then I saw your story uh you know with at the Pats training camp or whatever the event was mm-hmm. yesterday and I was like no way like this guy's from up north like I I was thinking you know you'd you were from down south or something I'm not mm-hmm. sure if I saw like a po- a hard rock poster or something in your room like before I kind of did some diving into like Oh, some, some older you know stuff. I do have a, um, I have like a hard rock, uh, Florida Powell or something that I used yeah. to hang up as like a banner. So you might have seen that in one of my like my old studio that I yeah, have. Yeah, I was. Wow, doing, I forgot about that. I was doing like <laughs> I was doing a bunch of uh of like deep diving into, you know, the stories you posted and you know your YouTube channel, and I noticed that, and I was like, Is this guy from Florida? Because I'm I'm based <laughs> in in South Florida, so. That's why I was. Oh, okay. That. I got you. I got you. No, I honestly don't know where that thing came from. It just was like in my family, and I took it because I was like growing up as a musician. I was like, "Ooh, the hard rock! Like that's mine. I'm taking." Oh it. yeah, for sure. So I just hung it up on the wall and whatnot. So. That's awesome. How yeah, no, I've been bo- I've been in um, Boston my whole life. I was gonna say, you know, from up north, like how's that? How's the music scene up there like compared to down south, like Miami? You know. It's got, I mean, mm-hmm. coming from an outsider who has never been to Boston or New England, anywhere up north, it's, I see the music scene like a little bit differently. Like maybe it's not as, um, it's not as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like affluent, but maybe I'm wrong. How's mm-hmm. that experience been for you though? Um, it's good. I feel like it's changed over the last few years, especially post pandemic, but Um, I mean, it used to have a really great, like, rock scene when I was big playing around and stuff like that. Um, nowadays, it seems like there's still, like, a lot of rock shows going on, but I do see a lot more, like, hip-hop, and, um, I see a lot of, like, DJ nights and stuff. Like, there's a big company out here, uh, they're kind of all over the the country, but Fangirl Fantasy, they host a lot of these, like, uh, you know, it's like, if you like a certain artist, like, uh, Harry Styles or something, they host, like, event nights. So you see a lot of stuff like that, so... We have a lot of venues. I mean, we've changed to where, like, you know, we now have like the MGM Fest, uh, MGM Music Hall. I think is what is, is like it's what it's officially called. Yep. So we've been that's attached right to Fenway, basically. So we've been getting a lot of uh, newer shows because of that venue and stuff like that. Oh wow! Um, but it's kind of like all over the place. Like you see everything from like, you know, big country stars. I mean, we just had who was it? Um, Fall Out Boy with four years strong and bring me the horizon just played at fenway the other day so that was really cool wow. uh beyonce was around like we got a lot of big acts and i live near gillette too so like there's always like i'm right in the middle so it's either like big shows going on at fenway or big shows going yeah. on at gillette and then there's of course like all the small bars and stuff too so you've always got something going on that's that's good yeah <laughs> there's always stuff in there it's tough though where i live the traffic gets crazy though <laughs> oh no i trust me, i believe it and we we get you guys mm-hmm. i mean maybe not you personally but you know as a Floridian, we get the snowbirds coming down during the seasons but mm-hmm. anyways i guess we'll start it off um for those for the people out there who don't know what you do who you are um i want to dedicate a short segment <clears throat> in the beginning of this to you know, mm-hmm. I want you to talk about, you know, obviously who you are, what you do, and just give a little introduction about yourself and what you do as a music marketer. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm Jeff Blute, um, 29, going to be 30 years old. Um, I kind of think of myself as like a music entrepreneur or uh, just a digital creator, really. Um, I've been playing guitar for 16 years, I've toured all around the country. I have a lot of experience in the music industry, but over the last five years, I've kind of gotten a big um, interest in marketing. So I've shifted into doing music marketing for artists and things like that, because um, that's where a lot of artists I found kind of need help is in the marketing room, especially on social media. So um, yeah, over the last like three to five years, I've just been focusing on social media marketing, 
um, helping artists with their Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, press, um, pretty much everything in the online space that they need, um, as well as like recording and publishing and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. I don't tour as much as I used to or anything, but, um, you know, I had a lot of heydays touring, but now it's all behind the scenes stuff, which I prefer. I'm older now. I'm I'm a father, so. Um, it's cool to kind of have a different like seat in the car. And Absolutely. Do We're going to actually dive into that being a, you know, husband and father on top of balancing music. I want to dive into that dynamic a little bit later in the episode, but you did mention touring. And from what I found, um, one time mountain and seven mazes, you did a tour with them a while back. I'm not mm-hmm. sure how long ago, but I wanted to dive into that experience. How was that? And what was the dynamic and vibe? Uh, relating to like going on tour, being live on on shows and stuff like that. How was that? Yeah, definitely. So One Time Mountain was my band. Uh, it was the band that I started out of high school. Um, so that that tour was about, I want to say that was like early 2018, maybe 2017. Um, but yeah, so Seven Mazes was a band from Germany um, that we had just connected with somehow through connections, social media, et cetera. Um, and we invited them over to the States. They wanted to come over and play shows in the States. And we were like, Hey, we're trying to do a tour. We're going to go along the East coast. So we did from about Massachusetts down to about South Carolina. Um, so they flew in, um, we had a van already. Uh, it was like this 80, it was a 1986 Dodge Falcon. It's like a conversion van. It's one of those vans that they have like the couch, the overhead seating. We actually gutted the whole thing. We got it out the shower in the back bed and we built bunk beds. So we actually crammed like. I want to say there was like seven to nine guys all in one van. <laughs> it was pretty brutal. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, they talk, they hear about the, uh, like touring is like this glamorous lifestyle. And it probably can be if you're riding in like tour buses and, you know, you're doing like stuff in style. But like we're, we're driving an 86 Dodge Falcon with nine guys crammed inside of it, pulling a trailer down the, down a highway. <laughs> like, yeah. It wasn't glamorous, but it was a lot of fun, you know, uh, especially like being with people that are like, not from the states so we get to teach them a lot and they get to teach us a lot about germany and just like the way they interpret stuff so it was a really cool experience um it had some like uh we had some hardships during it though like uh when we got to south carolina our steering wheel snapped off the column so we literally parked the van at the venue and all of a sudden the wheels didn't move anymore and the steering wheel literally broke how'd you guys Um, deal with that So we got stuck in South Carolina. Um, The venue was nice enough to let us like keep the van there and park it there. Um, Luckily, I didn't know this was a thing. There are like, uh, you know, mechanics and stuff that will come out with a van and they have everything in the van they need. So they came out. I think he spent like six to eight hours on it. We just sat in South Carolina in like the ghetto part of town, just like playing football and just like yeah. hoping to God that this was going to get fixed. Cause like we had to cancel the show, the next show that we had, which I think was in Philly. I was really bummed about that. Cause I wanted to go to Philly. Yeah. Um, but it was a learning experience. Like if you guys are going to go on tour, definitely make sure your van is in like tip top shape before you hit the road. No, for, for sure. sure. That's, that's crazy. I mean, I wouldn't even expect something like that to happen. Obviously I'm sure you weren't mm-hmm. expecting that either, but, um, One thing that I have seen from other, or just from hearing testimonies from other people going on tour is like the drainage of energy that it it has on you. Like at least for touring every day. Oh yeah. I'm not sure if if you guys were doing that, but what are, what were some things that you guys did to like keep that energy? At least I'm not sure if that's something you've dealt with, but how, Mm -hmm. how did you go about that? You know? funny enough like if we can like um i think at the time i had an anytime fitness uh Mm -hmm. membership which is like you know a pretty expensive gym membership but you can pretty much go to any location that they have so um working out believe it or not even with all the lugging of gear and all the tiredness keeping your body moving because like when you do a lot of work like that like i used to work construction too when you do a lot of heavy work and then you just stop and you just sit still your body stiffens up with it bad so you got to keep moving even if it's just like walking on a treadmill um and then like we'd play football and um someone has skateboards so we were like skateboarding and stuff like that so um it's definitely tough i feel like i probably drank way too many monster energies and red bulls over that course of the tour as well but oh yeah um yeah just staying active really because sleeping is definitely the hardest part of it like we were crammed in these bunk beds that like you're constantly moving if you're driving in and um 
just like yeah the worst sleeping <laughs> conditions you could think of not comfortable rocking like getting sick like it's definitely tough it's not oh, easy but sure. i i think like um eating healthy is super important too i know i just said i was chugging like red bulls and monsters but mm. like eating fruit a lot of water on top of it uh that's gonna help majorly no i love that. i definitely stuff. resonate with that a lot and it's that's good that you mentioned that because a lot of people may neglect or not realize the importance of uh, fitness and staying active. I know, as for me personally, I um, started my like fitness journey, you could say, about a year ago, taking it seriously. Obviously, you know, mm-hmm. I have my, my balance and my breaks that I take time off for, but um, for you, <clears throat> I know that you go in the mornings, I see you, you know, you post all the time, or at least try to get it done early in the day. How's that affected your mm-hmm. life as far as like fitness and stuff and allowing you to be more productive i guess you could say oh it it helps a ton um especially like i say a lot that i go to the gym more for my mental than i do my physical health um because there's just something about like getting on the treadmill walking for 10 minutes and listening to a good podcast uh that gets your mind right for the day and not looking at your phone like i i I have this rule where like I, i mean i look at my phone but like if people are texting me instagram messages like none of that gets answered until after i've done the gym session so like Keeping the gym in the morning for yourself, I think, is super important, uh, especially for the mental health, because as creators or really anyone, we got a lot going on. The world's constantly changing, stress, whatever, goals, ambition. It's it's a lot. So it, it helps mostly with the mental, but then, of course, you get the physical benefits of it well. So I, I think it's super important. Um, I didn't go this morning, but uh, pretty much, yeah, every morning I'm usually going. Yeah. Uh and it's nothing crazy. I'm not trying to be the most ripped guy. I'm not trying to be Alex Ramosi's size, but um, I, I definitely want to stay in shape and not like, you know, get off that COVID weight and, and all that kind of stuff too. So it's super important. I think anyone, if you're not already, at least just get out and do a walk. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's free. Get some sun, get out and walk, put your feet in the grass and that's going to help a ton. Yeah. No, I love that. And that's, that's really, that's good that, that you have that. And I'm sure that it, benefits your productivity a ton and allows you obviously mental clarity first but um no that's good you mentioned earlier that you did construction was that a f- your first job or are you still doing that or no are you full-time music no um that was kind of like it that was like a mid pandemic kind of like the world was crazy like i need to make money i just had a baby type energy oh, yeah. where it was like hey my friend was like he was helping build one of the amazon warehouses down in connecticut and he needed help and i was like yo i'll come lift some rebar and help you put in some stuff and make some money. Cause at that point, like, cause I left the band in 2018. So from like, like, you know, 2018 to 2020, I wasn't really doing much other than my, my own business. And, uh, and then the world shut down and everything was kind of crazy. So you kind of had to like sh- take a shift in the other directions to kind of make money and, uh, survive. Mm-hmm. So I, I've done, I've done several different jobs over the years. I've worked in everything from construction to, daycares i worked at guitar center toys r us oh my uh, gosh you've been I everywhere worked for a man. company as well yeah man i used to build bikes uh, I've, I've done a lot of Damn. different things it's cool it's 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 a good experience though um i still actually do have a day job technically um it doesn't feel like one because i just do social media for a tech company but i'm technically on a salary and like i have like weekly hours but i work from home and so it doesn't feel like it but i do technically still have a day job i don't think there's anything wrong with you know, I always encourage, like, I see artists, they're, like, out here trying to, like, just full-time do music, and they have no money to do it. And I'm like, that's not going to help you at all. I don't care if you have 24 hours to focus on a song. If you don't have the money to put into it, like, you're not actually going to push yourself further into a place where you can get the recordings done, you can get the thing distributed, you can get the song mastered, and have it actually marketed to the right people. Like, I, I encourage every artist that, like, you should be grinding and working and saving money so that when you're ready to drop an album you have four or five thousand bucks set aside so you can actually do it as well no absolutely i i definitely resonate with that as well coming i mean from a part-time workers stance i work at a uh a small grocery food chain down in the south called Publix. they don't have them up there but um okay i've heard of them i think i've probably been at one yeah i mean they're they're kind of in the southeast region, Publix up to like Kentucky, I think they're now in. So they're they're expanding, oh, okay. but it's kind of like a Walmart, you know, just a little bit different. Um, I can definitely resonate, though, coming from a part-time worker standpoint with what you said. I think the, the good thing about that is that it gives you 
it gives you the freedom, obviously, when you have a little bit of extra side money to put into your music. Because, you know, if you're going full time, you're not going to have that. And you're, you you want to have make sure your priorities are straight first financially. So that can buy you, obviously, time and a little bit of freedom to put back into yourself as a creative for sure. Um, I guess the next thing I'd mention um, is your love for guitar. I, I went back to your YouTube and saw that you were going as far back as 12 years ago on guitar <laughs> and it's crazy yeah to i did think, some digging i like it's it <laughs> crazy, it's crazy to think like you like you've really been doing this for for a good minute at least for the music aspect of it <laughs> yeah no definitely and that's amazing sure. how's uh, your relationship with guitar been has that been something you were introduced to as a kid like talk about that for a little bit <clears throat> yeah of course oh my god my guitar is like my heart and soul so i mean from a little kid Ever since I was a little kid, I always had musical mm -hmm. instruments around, keyboards, guitars. Uh, it didn't really kick off for me until, like, this would have been, like, 05, 06. I was, like, middle school, just elementary school. Uh, my dad got me an electric guitar. Um, and that was kind of, like, the start of it. I don't think I, I jumped on it right away, but I'd mess around here and there. Um, it really hit the ground within, like, the first month, I'd say. I actually... Uh, a couple of my classmates were starting a band. So I think within the first month of me owning a guitar, I was already in a band. Um, and it's kind of a funny story. Like how it all worked out was we had this band, we just started practicing some green day songs. And then we had a class project where we had to like take a song, but we had to like rewrite it to fit the, whatever subject we were talking about in English class. It was really weird, but, we decided, you know, like everyone's going to just play a backing track. We're like, no, no, no. We're going to bring in our instruments to the school. And we're going to play in class. So we did as like sixth graders, middle school. So the school was like, what are you guys doing? Like we're bringing in a drum set. We're bringing in amps. They're like super impressed for young kids. We're like, what is this? Probably like 12 or something. <laughs> um, and we played and we performed in class. We recorded it. And it started <laughs> with the school being like, yo, we want you to, uh, play the school dance uh so from there we started playing school dances we started playing like uh pep rallies football games all types of stuff wow. um so it just kind of like got thrown right into it so yeah guitar um pretty much from the moment i got an electric guitar it was just like it became nothing but that and before that it was all about skateboarding for me and i just immediately shifted from like wanting to be a skater to wanting to be a guitar player so um pretty much all throughout middle school was just like music music guitar um doing sports too but it was like i, I could always just kind of tell the music was like what i wanted to do mm -hmm. i was into it way more than even my friends in the band were um and then like i want to say middle uh when i was like a freshman in high school i was lucky enough to play the palladium in, in worcester which if you're from mass you know that's like one of the biggest venues that we have in the state that a lot of big bands play at you know everyone from wiz khalifa to pantera to uh you know, four years strong and Green Day have played those stages. It's it's, it's a big called venue. Worcester, so to be able to play that, yeah, it's in Worcester. Worcester, Worcester Mass. Okay. It's called the Palladium. Anyone from Mass will absolutely know what it is. It's like a big. It's like a big theater. Uh, they probably used to do a lot of opera there, but now it's all like rock and metal shows and, mm -hmm. and hip hop shows and stuff. So it's it's really cool. Good for the community. Uh, community. Um, but yeah, so we played there. So that was like you know I was a freshman and then. You know, it was just pretty much all about music. I was always playing in bands throughout high school, playing guitar, trying to record videos, content. Because, like, 09, that was, like, when YouTube was still, like, new. Like, YouTube was, like, you know, hadn't been around. They weren't even owned by Google yet. Um, I still remember getting my first laptop and just, like, recording videos of me playing guitar, like, on the webcam. Like, I didn't even care that the, the quality was so crappy and the video was out of sync with the audio. I didn't even care. I was just, like, uploading that stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah i mean guitar has just always kind of been been there for me and then well, end of high school was when i started one time mountain um i connected with an old friend and we started that band and it was just kind of like again hit the ground running and started playing shows all around boston so um yeah guitar is just kind of like it's always been my main thing um it's how i learned music even now after like learning electronic music and uh, piano and all this stuff like everything starts with the guitar for me it always kind of yeah. comes back to that always stems no that's awesome that that's um that's that's really good because you know it gave you that like foundation obviously for branching off into different stuff now you said you were from you're you're from up north boston 
<clears throat> I used to, well, I guess how I got into music production was through a guy named Kyle Beats, and he started off in the Boston area, I think, I believe. Yeah. Then yep. he moved out to California. Have you ever, um, you ever met him or connected with him during? I haven't music? met him personally, no, but I did know that he was like from the Boston mass area. I don't know if he's still out here, but he was for a long time. Um, but no, I love that guy's content. That guy, like, for a long time was like owning the whole like uh, oh, YouTube yeah. ad realm. Like yep. every video you try to click on, it was uh, his, the, what was it? Has, the sauce plugin yeah. or whatever he had. Yeah, the drip plugin. He was. It. He was really he was plugging, going yeah. hard on that a lot. I didn't I never ended up purchasing it, but like I re- I really um connected a lot with his content getting into music production, you know, in middle school and stuff like that. So he's actually he's out mm-hmm. in Cali now, so or I think Cali, oh, okay. Arizona. He moved somewhere, but um I did see a video of his recently. He did like a it's some video to like test that it's not all luck with music like you know he he basically was starting an artist from the ground up and it was yeah. like a cool little experiment i love videos like that when they do content that's like you know what happens if i start my business from zero like how would yeah. i do it that kind of shit he's so. really changed a lot of his content stuff from where he came from because i i think starting mm-hmm. off he was more of like you know the studio vlogs basic let's let's make a beat Megan beats yeah yep. same thing right and i think back in 17 16 17 that was that that would get you that would get you a good foundation now it's a little bit different but as like you as a fan you know you see his content change over the years and i see what he's doing now with like you know bringing artists on to his collective and giving them a shot and stuff like that i love it so super super interesting there um speaking of guitar there's a guy on Instagram. You, I'm sure you've seen him. RJ Passon or Payson. He makes these guitar that's loops. Familiar. Oh, are they the ones that sound wicked like crazy? Hyper like, pop. Um, yeah, I, I think I know exactly. Have you who, seen that yep, guy? I follow him. So you, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why his. I was like, this loop doesn't like my ears. What I hear doesn't make sense to what he's playing. Yeah. Um, and then he did a tutorial in Ableton where he shows how he chops up his loops. And I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense now. Um, I should have figured he was doing something like that, but just like watching the playthrough videos, I was like, I don't get how that sounds like that because he's just sliding up the guitar. Like it sounds reversed. It sounds high pitched. Like he's either has a whammy pedal or something crazy going on there, but no, he's very creative. I, I like his stuff. I like what he's doing. Um, I just saw he's hosting like a contest right yeah. now as well. Exactly. Um, so no, he's great. He's got great content. No, he's uh, um, definitely I like what he does. Definitely inspired the space a lot. And I want to try try to sample some of his stuff, but um, you know, obviously, from a guitarist perspective, I I knew you would know him, but uh, yeah, he's his content definitely is interesting for sure. I know one of these days <clears throat> I. I I do like his loop, so I've been like wanting to like grab one and just try to make a beat with it, but I haven't like sat down with one yet. But I think one of these days I'll definitely. Now that you brought it up, I think I no, might actually sure. go ahead and flip one of those loops. It's cool. Now speaking of that, are you still um, making music, or is it primarily the marketing that you're doing? Um, I am still making music. So basically, I guess like to fill in the story here, because so. Uh, probably 2012 was when I started one time out and mm-hmm. toured all through that. Um, but at that time when I was in high school, I put, you know, growing up playing guitar, I played a lot of heavy metal, hardcore, things like that in high school. And there was like this era where hardcore kind of met EDM music and they were doing like a lot of mix. So like attack attack bands like that. So I was like, how do I create electronic music to add to the hardcore stuff we're doing? So I downloaded uh, fruity loops at the time. And I started production and I ended up falling in love with like Dead Mouse and uh, Avicii and all those kind of guys. So I started production in high school, continued that. Then I started the band and I just kind of stayed doing the guitar and rock world thing Um, from 2012 up until about 2016. I decided that I wanted to start my own company. So I decided to start Blue Productions. Uh, It then was really just like a beat production beat Mm -hmm. store you know, for rappers to buy beats, et cetera. It wasn't like nothing crazy to what it's kind of transformed into now. But um, so I was always kind of making beats and things like that. So throughout the years, even when I wasn't touring, I've always been making beats in my room, even if I probably have like a crazy hard drive of music that's never been released. 
Um, I did actually, I just dropped a single on the 24th of last month called Summer Lover. And it was a song that I'd been sitting on for probably like one to two years that I just finally decided like, you know what, let me like put something out. I feel like I should get back into like releasing music yeah. and stuff. So, and the response on that record was great. So I was like, you know what, this is the one we're going to put it out. So yeah, it, it's really, uh, I'm kind of back into releasing music and kind of what you mentioned there, you, you were talking a minute ago about Kyle Beats and how he's kind of transformed from doing that studio vlog producer thing to now doing like bringing people onto his collective. I feel like I'm kind of in that same kind of route in my own way. Cause yeah, you're right. 2016, 2017, it was big for that. Let's make a beat studio video. Yeah. Like, you know, the Johnny Giuliano uh, videos all the way up, you know, from oh, the yeah. Lex Luger, Luger days, you know, we all started doing those studio type beats uh, and videos and content. And that was big. I was in that realm for a while making beats and content, but now uh i actually took down my beat store i didn't want to sell beats anymore personally i just didn't want to like i decided to just take blue productions in a whole new direction um where i actually want to focus on like kind of like what kyle is bringing in artists that i actually want to work with that i want to co-release records with um and only sending beats to artists that i really rock with and not just letting anyone buy my beat for 20 bucks and making some trash song that my name is now attached to like no offense to any artist yep. out there that's like ever used my music like we all start somewhere you know we're all gonna make our first bad song like if you go way back to like my earliest productions and recordings they are absolute trash i should like people should make fun of them um you know but i just didn't want to expose my my music like that so uh it's a new direction but yeah we're still releasing music i've got pretty much like an album's worth of music right now like ready to go that i'm trying to figure out what to do with next trying to bring in more artists etc so um yeah i i'm trying to do you know full artist kind of production label thing outside of the the marketing realm oh, as I well i love that i love that and i see you know i see where you're at in regards to social media i see the platform you've built for yourself and for your company and the fact that you've made that decision to focus on quality over you know quantity rather than you know making the money, getting your beats out, whatever, selling on your store, and making that decision mm -hmm. to step back and to give your your creation to someone who's actually going to make something of genuine quality out of it. I love that. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure it was a difficult decision. But in regards to what you were saying then, are you, would you, are you like creating a record label? Is, is this what maybe the future looks like for you or – at least a collective with with artists or how does that look for you in your head outside of the market yeah i think um that's something <clears throat> i've been juggling a lot with over the uh the last few weeks and this is why the gym's so good like these are the like the gym moments are the times that i take to sit in the sauna and really think about stuff like this because yep. yeah it does kind of it feels like a record label kind of direction that we're going but if I'm being brutally honest, like I don't want to be a record label because there's just kind of a certain stigma with record labels and I'm not really here for that. I yep. kind of think of it more as a creative agency. Like we're here cause I do a lot of different things. I grew up uh, doing a lot of graphic design. Uh, I've learned Photoshop, uh, app, you know, photos. I know how to do photos, videos. Um, you know, not, I'm not amazing at everything. I'm a Jack of all trades kind of person, but um, you know, I have so much that I've helped people with over the years um, that now it's like I, I think of it like a creative agency where it's like you can come to us and we can do anything you want. Do you want to, you know, you need a new instrumental? We can do that. You need it mixed and mastered. We can do that. You need a, our uh, album cover. We can do that. You want to shoot content. We can do that. Um, you want to market your music. We can do that. Like uh, just kind of being more of a resource and a tool for artists than a record label. Like I might sign artists that I really rock with for a single or an album deal or whatever but i really want to treat it more of as a space that artists can come and go and use this as much as we want like if you want to do one record with us and then go do a different record with other people that's fine you want to do a whole album together that's fine you need just youtube and spotify fine we can do that so because everyone's kind of at a different point nobody follows the same path yep. um or is at the same point of their journey which i think is an important thing for anyone um you can never compare your chapter one to someone's chapter seven so if you're an artist that's just starting and you see everyone doing bigger things than you just know like you'll get to that point and you know don't worry about where they're at just focus on where you're at essentially i absolutely love that and that's so so important that's something that i myself have 
definitely struggle with for sure, you know, coming up trying to make content. And it's like you said, seeing someone's chapter seven when you're in your chapter one. It's 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 about perspective and you have to you have to find that balance for sure. But um, you know, seeing what you want to do and what you just explained with the whole blue productions and the value that that's going to bring. That's important. And I, and I love that for sure, because you, you mentioned in the beginning, there is a stigma for sure around record labels and you don't want to be seen as <clears throat> in that space. So mm -hmm. changing that and just, you know, making it more of a creative agency. I absolutely love that and resonate with that for sure. Um, what I want to go into next is EDST global. I, I noticed mm -hmm. what what exactly is that? Is that attached to you? Is that separated? So that's a partnership of mine. So EDST, yeah. uh, it stands for uh, everyday success team. So um, basically, you know, within my journey of, you know, doing music, uh, you learn marketing naturally to get your stuff out there, whether it's your music or your business or whatever. So with that, I was just kind of like stumbling along trying to find my way. Um, and kind of how it happened was so um this kind of ties into the guitar thing so uh i'm sure you're probably familiar with producer grind yes um so producer grind actually reached out to me to collaborate on a guitar pack that they did it's out uh I'm trying to remember what it's called it's the 24 karat golden hour uh pack that they have it's a guitar pack so i have a bunch of loops in there along with a, a bunch of other guitarists as well um so basically I got a part of that pack and I got connected with another producer by the name of CG beats. Um, he used my loops, used it in a beat. We started selling beats together. Um, and just kind of with that, we built a, a relationship and we started connecting, doing more beats. And one day he's like, Hey man, I actually work with a marketing agency called EDST. You know, I'd love to help you, you know, get your page to kind of my level. And I was like, all right, cool. So, you know, he just, I signed up with him. We started marketing, basically started growing my Instagram to kind of what you see today on the blue production side. Um, and then he approached me again and was like, Hey man, you know, like we're actually looking to bring more people onto the team. Would you be interested in becoming a manager and, and you know, selling with us? And I was like, you know, it's actually interesting. And I I'm always down to make some money, you know, um, not that it's, you know, it's not always about the money, but of course, you know, at the end of the day, we all have bills to pay. Absolutely. You know, we're not going to be, I'm not going to pretend like I don't have a, a rent payment and, and electric bills to pay like everybody else, you know? Yeah. So I was like, sure, why not? And plus like, you know, doing blue productions, I think ever since I started, like my biggest thing is like, I just want to help artists. Like I have a ton of friends that help artists. And the reason I've always done the graphic design and the mixing and everything from A to Z is that like, I just like, not that I want to have control, but I like to help. So any skill I can have that I can help, I'm here to, I'll, I'll do everything. So I always kind of felt like a label, always kind of felt like I was uh, mm -hmm. the A&R in charge of everything, even though I was the kid just like producing the play guitar, I was always trying to kind of take charge. So now it's like, wow, like I see what this company's resources has done for me. Like I would love to be able to extend this and help other people. So that's really why I did it. And I signed on, I want to say it was two years ago, it was in 2021. So I came on as a manager and since then I've just been working with them. So basically we're a full service media agency. So um, it's essentially everything from Instagram, press, Spotify, YouTube, um, pretty much everything in the online space um, that you can think of. We can even do billboards and stuff. Like basically the guys that, that run the company are really high up in the music industry as well. Wow. So they have a lot of connections and stuff. So partnering with EDST has been like the biggest thing for me to like really help take my own brand to the next level, but also give me the ability to help others. So um, that's really when I started to fall more in love with like marketing and realize like, you know, I want to be like a consultant for people. Um, I want to help people because I understand Instagram and, and all these social media, like when you should be posting all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I like, I've always liked planning things out. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of artists, they like the creative process. They love to be in the studio. do they hate the business side it's a total different side of your brain and you know they just kind of like i see a lot of artists that they fail because they just don't have a passion for the market business side that they do for the art form and i get it whereas i found a love for the business side of things so that's where i'm like you know let me help you with that i'll teach you how to release a record and how to plan things out and how to schedule you know how much you should be posting per week what hashtags you should be using 
you know, let's get the video in order, et cetera. Like I like planning that stuff out. So that's really where I was like, kind of found a new passion and a new role that I was like, you know, this is where I think I can actually provide a lot of value for people in a space that, you know, is unfortunately riddled with scammers and bots and just a whole bunch of BS oh, yeah. that artists are being um, sent through. Um, so, it, it, I mean, it's still tough. You know, everybody, everyone I talk to is always like, you know, everyone has their guard up. Yeah. You know, respect. The skepticism because is probably high. Exactly. We all post a thing as an artist and we all get that post on, promote on this, you know, yeah. account that hits in like three seconds. You know, yeah. those botted comments that want to pay us, have us pay them 10 bucks to promote their, promote, promote a post that's going to get like a million views in, a, in seven seconds because they botted that shit. Like, I think, just I like think people, flooded with that. no, for sure. I think um, artists and producers have kind of, they filtered that stuff out now and you they can, have, you can really tell there. you can tell the the genuine with the boss for sure but obviously mm -hmm. like you said you know it is still there um and i guess in your case how how do you assure your clients and like you know with your services like what does it look like for you in in that space like are you primarily organizing their content are you is it with artists like you're promoting on Spotify or like, how does, how do you get results? It's honestly a little bit of everything. It, it's no one thing because mm -hmm. everyone's at a different point. Like I was saying, some people are at uh, chapter one, some people are at chapter 17. Like, yeah. um, and I also nowadays, what's great about the services that I do is I work with people. I work with probably 80% artists, but I have another 20% of people that are uh, real estate agents. Uh, I have a celebrity chef that I work with. I have a lot of wow. guys in the car realm that do wraps for cars and stuff like that. So, wow. um, everyone's looking for different things. Some people are looking for, you know, to grow their followers. Uh, some people are looking to grow their Spotify and so YouTube. Everyone has a different preference too. Like some people are like, Hey, I want to grow my Instagram and grow my Spotify. I talked to a guy the other day. He's like, I don't give a crap about Instagram, I don't care about press. I just want a YouTube and Spotify. And I said, yeah. okay, cool. Like <laughs> we can help you. And depending on the budgets, um, you know, so it's hard to say. It's like, it's a little bit of everything, which keeps it interesting too. Um, I even do a lot of, um, we do a lot of system automation stuff as well. If you're familiar with like sales funnels, text and automation, uh, text and email blasts. Yeah. Um, we have us all in one software that we built as well that um, I actually train all of our sales team on the system. So I do a lot of stuff in that realm too. Is it like more than just um, marketing, but behind the scenes, is it like go high level uh, kind of like SEO? Pretty much. Like yeah, exactly. Something along those lines where we have an all in one system, like everything you need to market yourself. So, oh, yeah. um, so like real estate agents, I have a few real estate agents that, uh, we work solely on creating systems for them that involve text blasts and calendar setups and stuff like that. So, I'm even into the whole like backend analytics stuff um, that a lot of people don't really find that interesting. So it's it's really all over the place, but it definitely keeps it interesting um, being able to talk about, you know, press one second and then systems the next. It just keeps me very versatile and allows me to reach more people. That's awesome that you can manage so many different realms and obviously, you know, guarantee good results for your clients i've seen the test i've seen tons of the testimonials and i just think it's awesome the value that you can provide with you know what you do in your work so that's awesome i guess um something that i was questioning when you were talking so you're like you're directly working with edst or was that just kind of how you started and then you made your own sort of creative yeah so blue production started is itself and then in <clears throat> 2021 uh or 2020 um i basically just like i started as a client with them but now i'm kind of i work for them as an independent contractor and i'm just kind of like a partner with them so yep. i kind of basically like it falls under that blue productions umbrella whereas like you know they're my partner and they're they're what helps me you know fulfill a lot of the marketing services and stuff like that so um i do work with them we get you know we have weekly calls and stuff like that we have over 100 people on our team wow. um so it's really cool so i mean but it's also has the freedom where i can still do my own thing and still be releasing music and um still do all this stuff on top of um you know having all these clients but what's great about it too is that like because the edst has been in business for over five years and they've serviced over twenty-eight thousand people and 
they have a full support team that runs across the clock. So what's great is that not everything is actually being done by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm really just connecting the dots and talking to people. And when they need the service, I'm basically connecting the dots and, and really getting them on board with EDST. And yeah. I, I stay as their contact and as their manager throughout the process so that they have someone to communicate with. But, you know, pretty much it's, it's helpful when you have a team of people behind you that are helping push the button and stuff like that especially when you have so much going on so um, I love that for you sure. know I think uh, as entrepreneurs it's easy for us to want to do everything ourselves um, but if you ever read uh, what's it called the e-myth I think it's called the e-myth theory it's all about basically it talks about like if you're working in your business you don't have a business you have a job and it talks about creating teams and systems and automations and ways that you can actually take yourself out of the business. So, um, you know, aside from just talking to people on the phone and, and connecting them the dots, I don't do much other than, you know, strategizing and then letting my team handle what it is that we need to do for said client. So um, that helps a lot. I think if I didn't have that support team, I'd probably be like hair. I'd probably be bald because I'd ripped all my hair out from the stress. And that's, that's, that's <laughs> like one of my, Biggest questions for you. <clears throat> First, I want to talk about the E Myth. I had actually I had bought in the book like three months ago. I bought. I went on oh, okay. like I went on this whole book splurge. I spent like three hundred and sixty bucks buying like a thousand mm -hmm. of like motivational self help, like how to better yep. yourself and build. You know, work with people. The art of how honestly. many of them have you read? Is the question, <laughs> dude. I'm like <laughs> I'm a quarter of the way through. Um, Oh my gosh, I can't even think of the, the book's name. Uh, it'll come to me eventually, but um, I need, mm. the, the main thing is I need to start reading more. Um, Same. But what I was going to say is, so you have you have your team, and that's that's beautiful. And that's that's really where you want to be. If, you, you know, if you're working in an agency, you there's beauty behind networks, and there's beauty behind working with other people. A lot of times, like you said, we think we can do it ourselves, but that's really not that's not what's going to generate growth for both parties for us and for them. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. my question to you is how are you balancing everything that you're doing with the music, with the marketing, with the gym and also your family? Like how does that look? Cuz I know you're really, you're a really big family man. I see you post about it, and I love that. For me personally, obviously, you know, growing up with a close family, I want that for my future as well. And how does it look mm -hmm. like just just in your personal experience balancing all of that, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's definitely not easy. Uh, there's definitely some days where it goes better than others. Um, and there's some days where I do want to rip my hair out. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, I think everybody they always ask for like, you know, how do you balance things? <sighs> it's hard to say if it's even really a balance or if it's really just kind of like constant motion of one way to the other, just like, you know, for a while we're teeter tottered over here and then for a while we're teeter tottered over here. So it's hard to like keep that where you're actually balancing. Um, I'd say the biggest thing though is like living by my calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a Google calendar. So like, you know, that way I can kind of schedule everything in, um, and really see throughout the day. Um, it doesn't always go as planned, but it at least, hopefully gets me in a in a structure and then we'll kind of play it out by how the day actually unfolds um because it's very easy to lose track of time and you know sometimes there are days where it's like my daughter is having a hard time and i need to take an extra 20 minutes to get her situated or she's sick and so it's definitely like you just kind of like you roll with the punches a little bit but uh I definitely am somebody who can spread myself way too thin sometimes uh, with doing way too much. Um, and that's just like, you know, I think that's something a lot of entrepreneurs might find themselves in because as like a creative and as someone who's passionate and driven towards your goals, you're going to have new ideas coming up. You're going to have new things and you're going to want to spread out into seven different directions. And if you don't have that team or if you don't, you know, if you don't have that team yet or if you only have one team and not enough people, whatever it may be, like, you're going to lose track very quickly. Like even like last week, I was doing way too much between dropping my single talking to clients, I have other businesses, I'm trying to like push and start and investments over here. And uh, it definitely gets crazy. And I said to my girlfriend last week, I'm like, yo, I need to like, take a step back, 
and and cut some stuff out because I'm already getting overwhelmed again and just like uh, trying to do less, not more. Um, which is wild because sometimes you'll say, you'll hear me say the phrase, if you want more, do more. Um, but there are times where you actually need to do less to focus on that one thing that's like actually going to move the needle. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you just kind of like, you have to go through it to figure it out at the same time. You have to weather the storm to figure out like what's actually worth focusing on. Um, cause there's times where it's like, do I want to focus on beats? Do I want to focus on guitar? Do I want to focus on marketing? Do I want to focus on this? Yeah. I have a lot of ideas, so it's not easy, but, um, mm. you know, the, that's why I say the gym is more mental than physical because like, that's where I clear out a lot of my shits in the sauna, walking on the treadmill, lifting weights. You're like thinking about stuff all day, all morning long, no yeah. distractions. So that's why I say like, I don't look at my phone because I don't want to be distracted. This is my time to think. Yeah. I need to think and figure out. And that sets the tone for the day. Really. Um, that's another important part of why going to the gym early in the morning is good for me because if you sleep in till 10 o'clock, you wasted half the morning, you're lazy, now you're overtired, and you don't really want to do anything, it's just going to create a horrible day for you and you're going to feel behind and whatnot. And so, yeah, it's definitely just kind of like a, you just roll with it, really. Absolutely. And just try to figure out, you know, there's been times where it's like uh, I focus way too much on the business. So I got to focus more on the family, man, you know, and times where it's, we go on vacation for two weeks and now I got to get back to the business. So mm -hmm. like I said, it's just kind of, it goes back and forth one way to the, one way to the other. No, for sure. One thing that I was thinking of while you were speaking that it, your story kind of reminds me of, I'm not sure whether this is from a book or whether or not I found this online. I'm pretty sure I found this online somewhere, but it's this image mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you know exactly what I'm going to say. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's this image of like the sphere and a bunch of little arrows and it, it's supposed to represent like growth, right? And then there's like a hundred arrows around the sphere and they're each going out little by little. And then you have another image right by it where it's like focusing on one arrow and allowing that to be putting like the main thing that you put all of your energy in so that you can grow the most there. I'm doing a pretty bad job at representing it, but <clears throat> hearing what you just talked about as far as like trying to figure out what to put your time in. You have a guitar, you have marketing, you have production, working with clients, all this stuff, travel. And, <clears throat> you know, relating it back to that image, one thing that I would say is like focusing primarily on what has generated you the most growth in your life, you know, financially in relating to work, and putting your energy in on that rather than, you know, some of the other side things that you may do as far as like guitar and production and stuff like that is definitely what is, is how you can go about, you know, certain stuff like that for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then obviously balancing it with family, but that's good that, you know, you have that schedule and you have that Google calendar and other stuff like that to kind of plan out your day. I was at lunch yesterday with a friend who started a podcast and he's he's grown it I think a thousand followers in like three months he's really he's doing really good with that and I was kind of picking his brain on how he plans out his days and stays focused like that and he mentioned the same stuff you did you know the google calendar mm -hmm. he uses his notes app and a lot of the stuff because when you don't have that daily plan and you know the different tasks that you need to do in that day he said mm. it kind of just goes to shit. Like you don't really know where to. Oh, work. absolutely. You know, you don't know what to absolutely. do. Absolutely. Notion is a big one for me too. I don't, have you heard of Notion? No, tell me about that. <clears throat> so Notion is, a, it's a free program that it's kind of like, um, it's like a note taking app on steroids in my opinion. Um, really good, really cool. Uh, I use it for basically structuring out my week. So I have like what's called a weekly battle plan. So the calendar I use mainly for like events, calls, things like that. But then I kind of have like this weekly action plan where I do it um, usually today because today is technically like my Sunday. Like this is like my weekend technically. Mm -hmm. um, so usually today I'll sit down and be like, all right, what is everything that I need to get done for the week? And I'll write it all down. And then every day um, is like an objective. So Monday will be you know, focusing on reaching out to current clients and seeing who needs help with what, how everything's going. 
Tuesday will be focused on lead generation and bringing in new co- uh, clients and customers. Wednesday might be my CEO day where I'm just doing bookkeeping. Um, and then, thir- you know, and content creation, et cetera. So if you can break up your days like that, that's going to help tremendously with having a million things on your schedule and just having like every day have like an intention and then like maybe a couple other things, but like have that one goal set for the day of like today's the day that I get X done. And then if I get these other things, cool. But um, that's a big one. Staying organized like that is like probably the biggest way that I stay on top of everything that I'm doing at once, especially since it's in so many different directions. Absolutely. I'm going to definitely check out that app notion. I've been meaning to find something because yeah. I'm using, I use freaking look, I use sticky notes and I write down all my stuff, but it's like, I don't, it's not, I still use paper all the time. Like yeah. papers and pens are still, but like, um, I like to do like paper and pen for like the quick thoughts and yeah. ideas and like stuff that I know that is like, what would do, you know, like, I just want to draw it out real quick and see what it would look like. And then once I have the idea, like formatted and, and down, then I'll bring it into something electronic. Um, but Notion's really cool because I basically have this one page design that I call it organizing my life. It has everything from personal stuff. Like I have a, vi- you can create a little vision board in there. You can have a reading list. You can have your travel plans. Like you can have all these different segments for different stuff. And then you can even link in Google sheet, and Google docs and stuff like that. So you can really use it as like a central hub for your entire life and have like little like windows. Like I click on a bar, it opens up my whole weekly schedule and then I can close that out and I can open up another thing that's related to personal stuff. So it's just that way you can just kind of see everything in one big thing. Cause that's where a lot of even entrepreneurs who make a lot of money, I know that are struggling with organization and, and having some sort of system that allows them to actually work throughout the week in like an effective manner. No, I love that. I'm going to definitely check that out for sure. Cause I've been meaning to, mm-hmm. to find something to organize my life a little bit better. <clears throat> um, I guess I'd say, what what would you was would there be anything that you would change? I guess looking from where you started, um, or would you do? You, are you kind of one of the people who like trust the the process and believe that you know everything happens for a reason? Or would there be certain things that you'd change as far as like your music growth or getting into music, or like looking back um, on your own story? No, I mean, I think like you said, everything happens for kind of like a reason. And sometimes I, do, I think sometimes I do think about that because, uh, you know, sometimes I wish that my band kind of worked out better than it did. We yeah. had some great success. Uh, we were lucky enough to travel a tour. We played on, we opened up for bands like Buck Cherry, Candlebox, Steven Tyler. So we did a lot of really cool things. So there are times that I wish that that uh, kind of journey continued and, Um, But then there's other times that I'm like, you know, this all kind of worked out the way it was supposed to, because like, had that band continued, had I not stepping back, taking a step back, I may have never, you know, became a father and and found a whole new other realm. And I may have never worked with EDST and all this other stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, those thoughts definitely come up. But then I just kind of remind myself that like, even the smallest change in the past could completely change the future, like we see in most movies and stuff like that. So uh you know sometimes it's just about trusting the process no absolutely and i definitely i definitely agree with with what what you're saying there now as for you in like getting into you know music and going along your journey how did you battle the times where like you were in doubt or not sure if this was going to work out because i feel like a lot of music creatives who are getting into the to the game may struggle with that struggle with doubt and they're not sure of like okay Mm -hmm. how am i going to overcome this and get to where i want to be yeah have you ever dealt with something like that oh all the time i mean more so like especially creatives we're always going to get hit with like uh you know it's time for you to grow up it's time for you to get a real job it's time for Mm -hmm. this that the other thing and uh i don't know i mean like me personally i think that i've just kind of always had like a F you attitude of like, I'm going to do what I want kind of Mm -hmm. attitude. So, uh, and I mean like growing up, that was probably like, I was kind of a punk kid. So it probably didn't like look the best growing up, but you know, as into my adult life, like I didn't really, I still don't take shit from anybody. So like I was actually just telling a story yesterday about the time when I worked at guitar center, the store manager actually called me into his office and he said like, Hey, so, you know, I know you, you know, you have dreams of becoming an engineer and want to open a studio and this, and 
he basically in that conversation told me that like I should quit while I'm ahead because I'm never going to make it as a studio engineer and that I should just focus on Guitar Center. Wow. My response was at the time I was a manager. My response was handing in my keys and stepping down from management because I wasn't going to like, you know, be under the thumb of somebody who was just telling me to give up on my dreams because that's what he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I faced a lot of that even before that <clears throat> in coming out of high school. Uh, not a lot of people know this, but like out of high, you know, end of high school, I was really big into graphic design. I was doing a lot of Photoshop shop stuff and I wanted to go to school for craft design. And a lot of people told me that I shouldn't because I would never find a job in that field. So I didn't. I actually decided to go for criminal justice. And wow. after like maybe a semester, I was like miserable. And my dad was like, what What are you doing? Just go for music. Like you want you like music. Why don't you go for that? And so I did. And that was like the best thing that I ever did. So I did kind of like almost give into it for a while where, you know, those voices because it was people in my family being like, you're not going to make money. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. Like, you should just, you know, find something you're going to get a good job in. And I almost gave up to it. I give my dad a lot of credit for, like, telling me to not and just be like, just go for music. Because that was probably the thing that, like, kept me going for my dreams and realizing that, like, you know what? Fuck what those people said. Yeah. Um, you know, I just need to go for it. And, you know, I, I think now, especially that I've toured and been on stages with bands that they all grew up listening to, that it's like, well, I told you that I could do it. And boom, there we go. So now, especially having that uh, accolade under my belt, like I know that anything's possible because I've done it already. And anything that I want to do now, you know, it's just a matter of figuring it out. Absolutely. So it, it's definitely tough. And I think a lot of people are going to struggle with that. And you just have to like deep down know that like what you want is best for you. And I think that's, you know, perspective change now for me as I think about how like my daughter's going to grow up and I know she's going to have some sort of dream and ambition. So I'm trying to prepare myself for the day to be like, no, I need to like, you know, let her want to chase her dream. Like I, I would have wanted to chase mine. Um, so yeah, but if you get those, it's going to be hard. You're probably going to get down in the dumps and you're probably gonna kick yourself while you're down, feel like you should give up. Um, but I would just encourage people to not to just, keep trying my favorite thing from um jim carrey was like he did a speech and he talked about his dad being an accountant which like you think like an accountant is like a safe job and like Mm -hmm. he was you know let go as an accountant so he's like you can basically fail at something you don't want to do so you might as well as try and go for the thing that you do want to do yeah because if you still fail then what does it matter (laughs) you know choose choose your heart uh, right it's like it's hard to be also that exactly choose your heart i love that line I love that. You know, I think we all saw that too with the pandemic. You know, we all went from like working day jobs and stuff. And like, unless you were in an industry that allowed you to work from home, like, you know, I was at Guitar Center and they basically were like, hey, we're closing the doors. Like, you're going to go sit at home for the next six months. Um, You know, that was like uh, the, the rug was swept out from under all of us. So it's like, you know, all these people lost their jobs in an instant, you know, I think everybody kind of came back with like a new perspective on life that it's like too short. A lot of people didn't go back to corporate jobs. A lot of people, you know, started new businesses or just like literally went and lived life, you know? So you just got to remember to if deep down is just like kind of follow what it is that you want to do. And you're going to find, you know, you may actually go through that journey of being like, I want to do this and then stumble upon something that takes you in a whole nother direction. And it might be parallel to that. I would say that's kind of how, you know, I thought my whole life I was going to be a touring rock star musician. And, you know, I had a stretch of that and it turned out I ended up liking business and marketing. And now I do marketing for everyone from celebrities to small local artists. Like, um, I didn't think if you'd asked me like 10 years ago, if this is what I'd be doing now, I'd probably say no, I didn't think so. But you no, know. I love that. And that's, that's awesome to hear like how the story has changed. And I think it's important too with what you said is just like you know keep an open mind because you really don't know where you're going to end up obviously you know you were you may have thought okay i'm going to go into this band i'm going to focus only on guitar and then 10 years later you know you're doing marketing for like food chefs and artists it's like it's crazy so i love that for sure now in regards to where you're at now with what you've Mm -hmm. built with your brand and you know financially are you like how does it look now in regards to like like financials like 
are you solely I know you said yeah you have the day job but it, it doesn't really feel like it because it's like you know you're doing the marketing um, mm-hmm. with your daughter you know going into your 30s is this like how are you how does it look for the future like are you gonna mate like stay with the day job are you gonna go one like 100 percent into blue productions in the agency or are you basically at a point where it's like okay i don't have to worry about doing this or working these hours because i'm i'm financially secure like how does that look mm-hmm. for you um i mean right now with everything i mean i would like to just kind of um i think the goal is to ultimately take blue productions and the combination the partnership with the EST full time um i think right now it's definitely like um you know financially we're definitely like stable we're okay you know we're doing good and definitely no complaints you know we've i was just <laughs> saying how i was like i was like i didn't grow up in an apartment <laughs> with uh central air and like yeah. you know nice parking lots like i i i came from like you know the ghettos of lowell so um you know we're definitely sitting nice i'm not rich by any means but it, like i said it's not always about the money it's about living a life that you truly feel fulfilled in i think um Absolutely. but obviously i have big goals i want to do bigger things and uh i think over the next few months um yeah i think it's just going to be a new season of like trying to take blue productions full time with this new kind of creative agency that we're rolling um, trying to figure that out and just doing more marketing and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, cause like, you know, day jobs, it's like we just said with the pandemic, like I've seen the company I work for now do layoffs before there could be a chance to layoffs come again. And, you know, I'm one of those people and that's fine. I don't have to stress about mm-hmm. something like that because if they do, I have other ways that I make money Absolutely. and then I can instantly go and make money. Um, and that's like, I think that's, um, something that's good important too. like um if you can create some sort of second income for yourself as an artist um it'll just help with not worrying about like if that job is actually important or not um because you know i i've definitely had that part where it's like oh i don't want to leave the job because i need money and whatever and it's like nowadays i've just i've called it jobs and just quit straight up and been like i'm not coming back now because like yeah you know i don't have to um I choose to because it brings in more money. It's easy. I like doing social media. It helps. So it's definitely not a bad thing to do. But um, yeah, I'm excited to kind of see where things go. But we're kind of in a season of of redirection. And um, that's why I just released that new single. And I think I'm going to have a lot more music releases to come. So I'm excited about that. And yeah, I think um, you can only plan so much. I can obviously set goals and targets. But you know, who really knows what will happen over the next five, 10 years. Absolutely. Now, what do you enjoy the most as far as what you do? Is it the production side, the, the releasing the singles? Because you were talking earlier about, you know, a lot of good feedback when you release the song. Obviously, I know you love mm-hmm. guitar, but what are some of the things that you enjoy most about, like, your work that you do outside of, um, you know, marketing and stuff? Or if that's... Oh, what, okay. What so with, like... um. I mean, with everything, as far as like music goes, I would say my favorite part is definitely just like being in the studio and creating, Mm -hmm. Um, having that vibe, having that kind of sensation of like uh, blocking out the world because you're in a start, you're in a studio, usually studios don't have windows, like you're kind of excluded from the world. You're just focusing on the sound, the mix, the vibe, the energy. Uh, I love that feeling where it just kind of like probably what like video games are for everybody else is like mm-hmm. that feeling of like escaping reality. Um, I love just being wrapped up in like that creative zone and just like um, honestly just being by myself and just creating um, and just like letting my mind run. Um, as far as like releasing music, uh, it's not like I don't dislike it, but it's definitely like that's where like the more tedious stuff comes in because like once the song's done, and it's mixed. Now we have to figure out the schedule. We got to get the artwork. We got to get the promo videos. We got to figure out the budget for playlisting. We got to, you know, figure out how long are we going to go organic before we start the paid advertising route? Are we going to be Facebook, Instagram, Google? Um, so a lot of that stuff, I mean, as much as I enjoy it, is definitely way more mundane than the creative process. So it's not my favorite. It is something I like to do. But um, yeah, creating music is just like at the end of the day, my favorite part. And I think that's why. 
I decided to do kind of rebirth and re bring back a, a new direction for Blue Productions was because like I kind of did stop producing for a while and I was like, you know what, I need to make music. I have to do it. I have to put it out there, even if I am doing all this marketing stuff at the same time. So um, yeah, that's like my favorite part. And then like in, in terms of marketing, it's really just about connecting with people. That's like my favorite part of it. It's like oh, yeah. getting on the phone, <laughs> talking to people, hearing their stories and figure out where they are now versus where they want to go and seeing if I have the tools and resources to help take them there. To get so there, yeah. that's like my favorite part of it. And the rest of it's just, you know, it's just all finer details. The we're going to do Spotify, YouTube and whatever. That's just like, that's just the minor details of it. But um, connecting with people and creating with people, I think are the two do best you parts have, of what I do. Now, do you have a, like a best client story, I guess you could say, or like a, what, like a favorite client that you've had either really good success with or that you've resonated, I guess, a lot with hearing their story. Have you ever, um, I guess, hmm. calling back? So, I mean, right now I would say uh, in terms of resonating the most with the client would be uh, one of my good friends. His name is Trevor Finney. Um, he's actually, uh, he's a photographer and he actually – does photography for Joyner Lucas, if you're familiar oh, with him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Trevor is a longtime friend of me. Um, yeah, I, like I said earlier, I, we didn't really touch much on this, but I grew up in Lowell and I lived in Lowell for many years, but then I moved to a town called Tingsboro, which mm-hmm. is kind of like right in between Mass and New Hampshire. When I moved to Tingsboro, it was probably like elementary school. Trevor was the first person I met. So Trevor was my very first friend in a new town that I'd never been to. Um, uh-huh. so now me and him have grown up through middle and high school. We graduated together. Um, and now we're both kind of in this entrepreneurial journey. Um, so to have him as someone that I'm now helping and to see him doing big things and me doing things, it's like, it, it's just really cool. I think, uh, that resonates with me a lot because we both came from the same place and to see us now going out there and doing stuff. Uh, it's just very fulfilling and also just, sh- again, just shows that realm of like, uh, we can do anything we set our minds to because we were definitely the two troublemaker kids that everybody thought that we weren't going to do anything after high school. Um, yeah. So to kind of prove everybody wrong together is like probably been one of the coolest things. Um, but I mean, I've met a lot of cool people over the years. Uh, I've been in some really cool rooms, learned from some really great legendary people. Um, so I've had a lot of cool experience, but that one oh, definitely resonates resonates with me the most just being that like <clears throat> our stories are very similar and very parallel so if you don't if you guys don't know limitless uh clothing and media they have an awesome clothing brand uh and trevor they do he's actually like he's actually been gone from being like joiner's core photographer to now directing all of his music wow. videos so to see him go from that as well has been really cool so that's limitless, probably, he's probably one of my favorite limitless is the clothing brand that he's associated with you're saying yeah that's so it's his it's his company they're kind of like a clothing and media company so it's um it's like l let me grab that i have so many of their their merch i'm gonna check that Uh, out so like this is one of their right here lmt oh yeah so check them out they've got stuff and his content is amazing are you Uh, do you have a clothing brand by the way do you have a merch me personally no i mean i have merch i do have merch on the blue production site okay um that I launched actually in 2020 during the pandemic while I was sitting at home. I was like, oh, nice. what better to do than the launch a merch store? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Right. That's no, that's yeah, awesome. So. I guess, um, I, I want to wrap it up shortly, but I want to get your take on, I guess, what is, the, what is the next, what is it? Four, five, six months of the year left. What, what are those, the rest of the year look like for you? What are some things that you're planning, I guess, in your life or that you're looking forward to getting done? Any projects you want to talk about or, I guess, kind of a, an, an outlook for the next couple months before the year ends? Some goals that yeah, you have. Yeah, so, yeah, we're already, you know, halfway through the year. Yep. Um, so, I think just, you know, kind of finalizing everything in the vision for Blue Productions and where I want to take that. Um, I may release another record. I have kind of a follow-up record to my current single um, that I think will do really well. Like, they sound similar. They have kind of a similar story. Um, So I have definitely another record I'm releasing, uh, kind of in the hunt for looking for artists right now um, that I want to collaborate with and want to release songs with. So right now we're just kind of like in a 
almost like an A and R season um, where I'm just kind of reaching out to artists, connecting with people and trying to, you know, make some stuff that way. But um, yeah, I think uh, just trying to finalize all that. I do have the vision where I'd love to open a physical location for blue productions where I can have a place people can come and actually, yeah, yeah, where you could have an all in one, where one room's a studio. Maybe we have, my vision is to have two studios, a studio A, a studio B, um, a live room where you can practice performances and also a photographer room. My girlfriend's a photographer, so that would really be like for her to be able to do studio sessions and any clients who need, you know, proper photos and stuff. It would basically be an all one in, one stop place. You could come in that creative agency to do your content, your music, whatever. And then if you want to talk marketing, that's of course something that we can help with. So, um, that's kind of like my long-term goal. I don't know if that's, it's not going to happen by the end of the year, unfortunately, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, over the next like five years, absolutely five, 10 years, I could totally see that. I think that's important too. like, definitely um plan for the future even if it's not gonna like it it may not it may the journey may change Mm -hmm. but you know try to think ahead five years and see like if everything worked out what would it look like for you and try and go after that of course it's gonna change and different things are gonna happen but you may stay on track and you may accomplish exactly you know what you want it's kind of like how i grew up as a 10 year old kid being like i want to perform on stage and and tour the world and you know i did get to drive from boston to cali and i've played on you know, 50 foot stages and uh, met musicians that I grew up worshiping the ground they worked on studying their music. Um, so it's like, uh, just shoot for the stars. You I know love what I mean? That. I love so, that. Absolutely. But yeah, just kind of always planning uh, things change. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm like, like I said, I spread myself thin. So I might be doing like, I might have a new crazy idea of something I'm trying to do. And uh that may work out it may not i might just run as far as creating logos and then stop i yeah. do that sometimes i, no, I just let and, the creative pieces flow and then like, yeah you know what i'm actually not gonna do that idea yeah. <laughs> that's something i feel like creatives will struggle with is like we get really passionate on very specific things for for very specific seasons right so like mm-hmm. for a season we'll, we'll I, at least i guess i'll give you an example like growing up as a kid like I'll be super passionate into like Legos and then I'll move on to video games or like some, something mm-hmm. stupid like that where it's like, you know, I love the, the creative design of like making merch, but then, you know, I'll stop that for a little bit and I'll go into music production. And it, it's hard because, mm-hmm. you know, you do spread yourself a little bit thin, but it allows you to, you know, ultimately grow creatively. And I guess, I think when you get, when you're in the beginning of that, I think it's good because you're learning all these different things. You're finding what it is you like and don't like, and you're you're kind of like adding to your skill set as well. Like Photoshop isn't something that I do or even like publicly offer. But if somebody needed something, yeah, I can design you an album cover, yeah. no problem. But it's not something that I advertise. But it is something that I can do now, mainly for my own uses. But yeah, if you're a young creator, especially if like you're a teenager, if you're in your early twenties, just try as many different things as you can. And maybe do spread yourself thin at first so that you know, like, what you do like. And so then you can trim the fat on what you don't like and then narrow it down. Um, You know, I think I had to spread myself thin to realize that marketing was the thing that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And now I can trim the fat and focus on marketing and getting clients that way and stuff like that. So, yeah, I love that. And now, obviously, you know, you're a busy man. You got a lot of stuff going on. Just for for my for I, this is what I was wondering is why say yes to to come on this podcast like you know and fitting the time in because there was I'm gonna tell you this there's a lot of value that has been shared today and I obviously am very grateful and thankful for that you know that you could dedicate the time that you have to come on this podcast but what what made you say yes because obviously we we come from different areas different you know social media pages and stuff like that so. What, mm-hmm. what, why, why the yes for this today? Uh, I mean, I like to, I think one of my biggest things is I like to inspire people. So mm-hmm. I like to just tell my story, not as a way to be like, Hey, look at me. I'm so amazing. I do it more as a way to be like, Hey, I did this. So can you. Um, so, I mean, I, I forget exactly how I found your page, but I stumbled across your content. I thought it was really dope. And, you know, once we started talking, it seemed like we had a good synergy. So once you invited me on, I was like, dude, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'm always down to do these stuff. And, 
to tell the story so that somebody can hopefully take it as motivation, kind of like how I did. I grew up watching people's interviews, listening to their stories, and um, storytelling is a big way to share a message. So I just try to share what I've been through as a way to hopefully guide others and let them know that like, yo, you know, people are going to tell you you can't do it, but I can tell you that you can. So that's really what it's about. And I thought this, you know, I like what you've been doing. I like the the people you bring on, the content you do and the questions that you ask. Um, I knew that you would kind of come prepared for like, you know, a good, you know, a good hour, hour and a half conversation to like provide value. So No, absolutely. Um, and this is something yeah. I hope obviously, you know, maybe not at at, at the start is going to be something that, you know, goes crazy, but as long as you know obviously for the future it'll impact someone's life that that that's all that really matters at the end of the day and that's something that i've been trying to implement with my content lately is just focusing on value rather than virality i feel like a lot of my stuff is oh been, that's been that's awesome i love that yeah a, lo- a lot of my stuff i and i'll admit this i've really been just trying to do it for numbers or i've i've been letting the numbers get to my head so um, as I told you, you know, I went out to lunch the other day with my friend and we had a long conversation about approaching, you know, just a new way to go about content creation. And that's something that I want to focus on with this podcast, with my music brand is taking a step back from trying to make something viral or new and rather creating something that is value driven, right? Simple, mm-hmm. nothing, nothing crazy, simple content people will resonate with and be able to gain from. And obviously this today, our interaction is something that's going to help, um, help that blossom. And I obviously, once again, thank you for your time. Um, just to wrap this up, where can people find you? Um, you know, plug different websites or whatever it is that you want people to know about you. Yeah, definitely. So, um, if you want to learn anything kind of like for the marketing side of things, just go to jeffblute.com, um, or look me up on Instagram, Jeff Blute at Jeff Blute. Um, as far as music, bluteproductions.net or at blue productions on Instagram. Those are the easiest places to find me. Um, and yeah, that's really it there. But awesome. I, I like what you said, man. I do like how you said that you want to bring more valuable content to, uh, the market because I think that's what's needed and I think now we're in a point we're in a season of social media where a lot of the fluff I mean it's still there and there's still things that are flashy and viral and stuff but people want to see the value and they want that's why people like Alex Ramosi thrive because he doesn't need to show Lambos and boats to get people he's wearing jean shorts and Crocs but he's giving you so much value on sales that you're like I don't even care that this guy is doesn't look cool I am getting so much out of this that uh, he's now like the biggest YouTube star and like business entrepreneur. Um, he has an event coming up and I think it's going to, he said that like it, you would need like six Madison square gardens to fill the virtual, like to, if you were to take the virtual event in person, like he's massive in the business world and he's not flashy at all. Doesn't yep. care about material things. He just brings value and just straight business and like, you know, knowledge to the game. So I, I yeah, I think doing that, that is great. And naturally, it'll come viral because people are going to gain so much from it. It will. And that's something that obviously, you know, I have been having to come to terms with and, you know, learning, obviously. And, and this is for everyone, too. But I guess at the at the beginning, it's like, you know, you, you kind of focus a little bit on numbers and you let that kind of dictate what, what goes on. But as you mature, as you grow, you learn that, you know, value is ultimately what what we're here for. Mm-hmm. And that's something I see that you have learned and you're, you're now at the stage where you're giving and that that's a beautiful thing uh, and a beautiful place to be in. So thank you, Absolutely, Mr. Man. Jeff for your time. I am very much appreciative of this video. will probably be dropping. Thank in. you for having me. My pleasure, dude. Absolutely. Thank you for coming <laughs> on. I hope this can grow. I hope our relationship can grow for sure. If I'm ever up North, I do have family in long Island. I don't know how far away that is, but next year I'll be up there. So it's too bad. Yeah. yeah, let me know. A couple hours, we'll go get something to eat or whatever. Hopefully, we'll end up meeting in person one day. But um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. God bless you and your family and your business, okay? You have a fantastic rest awesome, of your day, man. sir. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You Take as care. well. Thank you. Take care.